We've got another question for the AS Enthalpy Changes topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so I'll just go through the annotations I've made and then we'll get into the calculation for part A. So we've got um, magnesium reacting with copper sulfate solution. We're told the volume and concentration of the copper sulfate solution and we're told that the magnesium's in excess. So obviously the copper sulfate's the limiting reagent. We're also told the initial temperature of the solution and the maximum temperature it reaches. So obviously the difference between those is the delta T, the change in temperature, so it's 41.5 degrees C. So the first thing we need to do is work out the Q value, the energy change for the solution. So obviously energy's gone into the solution from the reaction and we work that out from the equation MC delta T. So M is the mass of the solution that's heated up. C is its specific heat capacity and delta T is the temperature change. So the mass of the solution is going to be 25 grams because we've got 25 cm cubed and we're told that its density is one gram per cubic centimetre. So 25 grams times 4.18, the specific heat capacity, which we're told there, times 41.5, the temperature change. So that gives us that many joules, but because we're going to express our final answer in kilojoules per mole, we're going to divide by 1,000 and put it into kilojoules. Next thing we do is work out the moles of copper sulfate. Remember we said that was the limiting reagent. So concentration times volume in decimeters cubed, 0.0125 moles of CuSO4. So the final thing we do is work out the enthalpy change by dividing the kilojoules by the moles. So we just plug our numbers in and we get an answer of minus, it's exothermic, remember the solution got hotter, 346.94 is the calculator value, but we'll have to give it the three significant figures. So it's minus 347 kilojoules per mole. So moving on to the next part, we've got to work out the minimum mass of magnesium needed um, so that it's in excess by 25%. We've also got to bear in mind that we're using a two decimal place balance. So the first thing I've worked out, or the first thing I've reminded myself about, is because they're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio, we would need, if we were reacting the exact amount of magnesium, we'd need the same moles of magnesium as we've got of copper sulfate. So for the next part, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I've just gone for the sort of one-step method. So that's how many moles we need for there to be the exact amount. So if we need 25% extra, we need 1.25 times that. So that comes out of that many moles. The other way you could do it is work out 25% of that and then add that on to that. You still get that number anyway. Now we know the moles, we need to work out how many grams that is. Sorry, this is really squashed in here, but we've just multiplied the moles by the MR of magnesium. So that's how many grams you would need. But remember, we're using a two decimal place balance. So because of that, we would need to weigh out 0.38 grams. Part B starts off with a definition, so we need to define the standard enthalpy change of combustion and include the standard conditions. So enthalpy change of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance reacts completely with oxygen at 298 Kelvin, 100 kilopascals pressure. Moving on to the calculation, so we've got to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation of non ane so this equation here but we're using enthalpy changes of combustion values. So when you're using enthalpy changes of combustion, the enthalpy change that you're calculating is calculated by taking the sum of the enthalpy change of combustion of the reactants minus the sum of the enthalpy change of combustion of the products, which comes out at an answer of minus 281 kilojoules per mole. If you get the equation the wrong way around, which is quite a common mistake, you get plus 281. Part C now, so it starts with another definition. The average bond enthalpy definition is the average enthalpy change when one mole of a covalent bond is broken in gaseous conditions. And then for the final part of the question, we've got to calculate the bond enthalpy for the bond in carbon monoxide. So we, because we use an Average bond enthalpies, I call this the in minus out method. 
So if you've used my videos where I'm teaching this concept, you'll have heard that before. So the enthalpy change is equal to the energy we have to put in to break all the bonds in the reactants minus the energy that we get out when the bonds in the products form. There's the numbers there, I'll just quickly run through them. So the delta H we were given is plus 210, so that goes there. The energy in, so that's the energy to break the bonds in the reactants. So in CH4, in a mole of CH4, there's four CH bonds, four moles of CH bonds, so we multiply the bond enthalpy by four, and then we add to that the um, energy to break two moles of OH bonds, because in one mole of H2O there's two OH bonds. So that's the total energy in, minus, remember the energy that comes out when you make these bonds. So there's the unknown one, the bond enthalpy for carbon monoxide, plus we're making three moles of hydrogen, so we're gonna get out three times four, three, six. So when you solve for X, you get a value for the bond in carbon monoxide at 1062 kilojoules per mole.